Well, the Christmas season's officially here, and my next guest really needs no introduction. If you're a fan of Christmas fiction at all, you've heard this guy's name before, Richard Paul Evans. He's the author of 47 different books, the latest of which is The Noel Letters. He's here to talk about that and so much more with us. So, a happy Thanksgiving. Well, thank you very much. You too. Um, you've been busy. Yes, very. You've been busy despite COVID. More, what do you think, Diane? Busier? Maybe busier, yeah. Busier. The thing is, there's more opportunity. You know, I couldn't do a book signing, so we had one online with 1,500 kids. It's like, it actually is awesome. Yeah, no kidding. I wanted to talk to you about um, the Noel letters. Uh, you've said that your wife says that this is her favorite of all your books. Why is that? No idea. I was totally surprised when she said that. Um, I was surprised just about me and it was, I mean, in the end I was like on a marathon. So I was writing till like two in the morning and um, Diane came over. I, I locked myself away in a hotel. Like, so Diane like brought me lunch one day and I said, I can't believe it's been a week. She goes, you've been here for 10 days. It's like, I've totally lost track of time. And so when I finished it, I set it off at 3.30 in the morning and it's like, I hope it's good. I have no idea. You know, they say you can't see the forest for the trees. I couldn't even see the tree. My head was just so stuck in it. And so when Carrie came back and goes, this is my favorite. It's like, really? It's, it's okay. And then I started getting these really great national reviews. It's like, well, I guess it's good. And now it's, the sales are really great. The response on, it's five star on Amazon. The response is amazing. That's great. I know that uh, you, you, you really like writing about um, the theme of redemption. So I yes. assume that that's going to be a, a big theme of this book as well. Yes. In fact, if I were to like, uh, it's about the book starts. Out, I love the opening of this book, but it starts out like most people don't want truth. They want confirmation. And um, this is her story. This is, she said, this is my story about finding truth and being open to it and how it changes everything. That's great. That's great. Well, so you've written, if I remember right, 47 books total. 41. This is my 41st novel. 41st. Yeah. Quite an accomplishment. Thank so, you. Yeah, it is. And, and, and you, you usually write at least one book a year. Sometimes it's multiple, you know, depending on. Well, at, least a book, at least a book a year. But um, like when I was doing Michael Vay and the Walk series, I was doing three books a year. It was killing me. Right. Do you, um, I mean, how do you do that? That's, that's a grueling pace. How do you? Good question. I don't know. Because every book hurts. I, I bet. I mean, do you ever, do you ever get um, writer's block? Um, yeah, I'm not really sure that I know what that means. I mean, I know the term and people always ask about it. It, it really just, to me, it really just means I'm writing the wrong thing. I mean, as we discover a book, I just went down the wrong road. Um, and so my answer for that is actually just trying to clear my mind and I usually go for a walk. You know, walking is uh, kind of freezing me up for that. But yeah, it's usually, I mean, when I write a book, I, I don't outline it. I, I, it's like walking into a Victorian mansion and figuring out, I mean, you don't know what's inside there until you get inside and you see the stairways, you don't know where they lead. It's like, that's what a book's like to me. And so, and so I, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not one of those people who just outlines it all. I'm, I'm more a writer who experiences it and just lets it come to me. You have said that, you know, with every book, it's, with every book, it's a piece of you. You know, to some degree, it's autobiographical, some more than others. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, I mean, I can only share what I know. And so in this case, uh, I mean, this case, this book is less autobiographical, except for the letters themselves. And they're my musings of life. And so, um, you, you know, but this one, you know, like my book, Noel Diary, that uh, is being produced as a feature film with Netflix. Um, that one to me is very, it's very autobiographical. A lot of scenes taken from my life. This one, not so much, but it's, um, but in some ways they're always, they're always my quest to figure out what's going on in, in my world, including mm -hmm. this one. You mentioned some, some, 
uh, some film projects. One of your, you know, one of your books is a uh, was developed for a film. Do you have any current film projects that are in the works right now? Well, actually, seven of my books have been developed for film. Right. Yeah, seven. Um, yeah, actually, I have a lot going on right now. I have two producers I'm working with right now for a possible TV series. And um, the guy who wrote Pretty Woman is writing the screenplay for Noel Diary and Noel, or excuse me, for Noel Street. And Noel Diary is being produced right now by Netflix as a feature film starring Justin Hartley of uh, This Is Us and um, producer, uh, film producer Charles Shire. So I have a lot going on. And I, and I have other, I have two other books being shopped right now with producers who want it. So uh, my producer, uh, my main producer called me a couple weeks ago and he goes, man, I hope your ears are burning because there's a lot of talk about you in Hollywood. So um, right now, almost everything I write is being produced. That's great. Well, very cool. I, 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 it's great to hear that you're staying busy and even with COVID and all that stuff that you're still busy or, bit, or even more busy than ever. So. Yeah, absolutely. It hasn't, it hasn't slowed down. In some ways, things have actually have actually improved and people are i mean for a writer as it doesn't like to stop my work and the other thing is people are more people are reading and they need something inspirational right now so that's what's happening yeah very cool um let's talk about so your first novel the christmas box uh one of the things that came from that was this annual tradition where there's this candlelight vigil people gather at an angel monument statue in cemeteries all across the globe and and uh, honor their deceased loved ones. Something that certainly happens in Idaho Falls every year as well, but this year it's going to be a little different. It's gonna be a virtual thing because of COVID. Do you wanna talk about how, that, how that's gonna happen? Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're using this platform that we'll put over, so that will be on my Facebook fan page. And uh, it, it, it will be kind of cool. We, it, I'm looking forward to the chance to um, connect with angels statues and angel people all around the country so we have more than 150 angels we have thousands of people that attend them so this is going to be a, an amazing night i'm very excited for and that'll be just on your website where people can watch that i know on facebook that's going to be on facebook my facebook fan page your richard your richard paul evans fan page that's at six o'clock on december 6th at seven seven o'clock mountain time seven o'clock mountain time december 6th Gotcha. And then along with that, since we're talking about the Christmas box, we got to talk about Christmas Box International, your charity. That, that's where, that's where I am right now. Which, yeah, which is where you're at now. But um, there's a lot of interest for this from what I've heard. Now more than ever, more than there ever has been. Yeah, you know what? We, it's, this, this is most I have. My session, uh, I came back in and we, we basically cleaned out our board from kind of got the cobwebs out, people who weren't doing anything, and kept the people who were really excited. And then we went through and we, and we completely changed the staff. And our new executive director helped me build this 25 years ago. She was here at the very beginning. She's a, um, a victim of abuse and, the, and went to the foster care system herself. She's a very savvy marketer. She was named Utah Marketing Woman of the Year. And it's like, she's very smart and now she's back. And we are just seeing we have probably had close to 500 new donors in the last two months. Um, we are, it's like, it was, it wasn't moving. It was like, there was no outreach really. And we were helping kids and we we're always full of kids, full with kids, but there was so much more we could do. And so we went through and we just, we rebuilt it and it's just exploded and it's fun. How many children, yeah. how many children have you rescued to date? More than 125,000. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, it could fill all the stadiums, all the college stadiums in Utah. Um, it's a lot of kids. And it, if you do like the number of days of care, that because we, we don't just, I mean, we, we, we protect them. We also have to feed them and put them through school and dress them. And uh, we, 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 the point here is to like help their lives be better and then put them in the right place. So, um, you know, they'll be here as long as a month. If you look at the number of days of care, we've done more than a thousand years of care. Wow. Yeah, we did 32 years just last year. Wow, that's great. You were cool. 
you were telling a story recently, I forget, I think it was one of, on one of your Facebook Live things about a kid that uh, has never been trick-or-treating. Yeah, that was great. He was so excited. I get to go trick-or-treating. That's Hey, free. You just have to knock and they give you free. It was like, it was like the best thing in the world for him. Yeah. It's awesome. But we hear stories like that. I mean, some of these kids, what they go through and, what, and the deprivations they have, it'll just break your heart. I mean, it's like we, this is a pretty common thing. You know, we asked one kid what they wanted for Christmas and she just said, I want something with a label on it. She had never had anything new in her life. She didn't even care what it was. It just wanted to have a label. Mm. So we are getting ready. If you look down the halls, they're filled with bins. We're providing Christmas for almost 3,000 kids. So they're, it's fun watching the donations come in. It's, it's crazy. It's a crazy amount of work. That's great. That's great. Well, it's that time of year when people, I guess, feel more inclined to give. They feel more inclined to give. And there's also, you know, want is, need is felt um, heavier. And so we're, we're in a great place that we can actually facilitate. And we, over the two and a half days, we partnerships and gain the trust of, of people and we're able to reach out and uh, bless lives. And that's what we want to do. Yeah, oh, for sure. Well, that's great. Um, let's talk about, um, in conjunction with your charity, you're hosting a virtual night of gratitude. Yes. You and your wife will be hosting that. That's on December 5th. I believe. Yeah, December 5th. And it's going to be the piano guys and uh, Paul Cardall. It's going, to be a, it's going to be a great night. And that's free. Anyone can just get on and join that. Um, it's, no, 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 actually, there's a, it's a charge. It's a $25 donation to the Christmas Box House to get on. It's a fundraiser. Okay. It's not, yeah, it's not just about publicity. It's like we're raising money to do the great work we do. And so, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's like a telethon, right? Right. So, yeah, it's only, it's only $25 to come on, but a lot of people end up giving a lot more. We have the money that comes in goes to the services for kids. Um, December 5th, is that at 7 as well? Yeah, that's at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Okay, so people can check that out uh, on your Facebook page. Is that right, Diane? Oh, it's from 6 to 8. 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. Six to eight o'clock, December fifth. Um, I did see recently you and your daughter did a Facebook live. She's just came out with her third book, Love and Olives. That's got to be pretty gratifying to see your daughter following in your footsteps and having success. Yeah, she's such a good writer. Now, I mean, and I've never seen her mention my name anywhere on anything. It's like it's like this is her and the skills of her writing. You know, I opened the doors for her, but she went through and owned it. And so the book hit the New York Times bestseller list, uh, the series list, which is the toughest of all lists. And um, I'm just really proud of her. She's a very good writer, and she's a really, she's just a really smart, sweet gal. So, um, and she's getting, I, I'm not supposed to talk about movie offers, but she has movie offers. So, um yeah, she's 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 crushing it. She's 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 gaining a name in the YA market, and I am very proud of her. It was a New York Times bestseller. Yes, that's three in a row. Three in a row for her, and she's more to come. First of all, there was a major book out right now, and they described the book. It's like it's kind of like Love and Gelato meets blah blah blah. So it's like become iconic, but it, it's in more than twenty countries. I think it's in twenty eight countries. So this is really fun to watch, you know, these readers from all around the world reach out to her. And I just, she, she's, I knew she had the chops because she helped me with the walk series and the Michael Vay series. And I kept telling her, I was like, Jenna, you have the talent. You have the talent. You can do this. And she really, she really wavered on if she wanted to do it or not. And that was her dream, but it was, it was scary to actually go out there. And, and, uh, it's a tough field. Like there's no way I would put her in there anymore that I would take my son and put him on an NF you know, a football field, you know, with the NFL. It's like, because he would get killed the first round, you know, it's like first play. It's like, I would never put my daughter in that realm if she didn't have what it took to handle it because it's too tough. You know, it, every, every morning I get up, there's at least a million people who want. Sorry, you're cutting out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. We got a little freeze up. There were, there were a million people that want your job. Oh, my job. Yeah. So it's like, it's a tough field. 
Um, we need to talk about um, Tribe of Kings. I talked to you a couple years ago about this. This is the men's group that you formed. No longer, uh, no longer exists. It stopped, huh? It stopped, yeah. Yeah, it, it may transform into something else. We're working with helping um, kidnap children. And so we're exploring it and the men want to come over. But yeah, it, didn't, um, it just never went viral. It just wasn't the right message. It just didn't work. Wasn't yeah. something people interested in. Yeah, it did, some, it did some great work and we had a lot of, uh, you know, we saved some lives. And, I, and some of my best friends I have are grateful for that. But uh, right now that's all, on, that's all on hold. Well, with the pandemic makes it impossible anyway, so. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Well, um, what's next for you? What's coming in 2021? What do you think, Diane? Oh. It, it's going to be major. It's going to be awesome. Four books. I have four books coming oh, out yeah. next year. Awesome. We just, I mean, we just met uh, just before this meeting. I just was meeting with this company. They, 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 they consider them, themselves small. They do $150 million a year. Their goal is to hit a half billion within two years. And um, they want to partner with me um, and they want to partner with the Christmas box house. It's like, it's such an exciting time, but uh, Christmas box is where we're having the most fun. We just have, we're having a ball. So it sounds like you got, you said four projects coming up next year. Four, four books next year. A dozen projects, right? <laughs> Which I'm really excited about because my essays are my most read things. My essay on how I saved my marriage has more than a hundred million readers. So, it's a book of all my essays. So I'm pretty excited about it. Oh, great. Great. Um, so any downtime coming in the future? You going to slow down and just no. take a vacation? Hell no. <laughs> Who wants downtime? I'm having fun. I'm getting up earlier in the morning. I get to go to the ranch with Diane this weekend, which I'm pretty excited about. Can I see Rat? Yeah. Hi, Rat. Yeah, we're going to go close Hi. out the ranch. <laughs> how are you? I have to try to keep up with Diane, um, but we don't like to sleep, do we? Nope. But I actually am getting, I am, I have not felt this much, have this much fun, felt this much passion for years. I love being here. I have the dream team. We fired everyone and brought in people who, who care. And, um, and they're so passionate. It's like, God, everything's working. I'm getting great media. My book's been the number one Christian book for four weeks. Um, the number one holiday book for four weeks. It's just the movie stuff is coming. And it's just like, I feel like God is, is just blessed me with amazing abundance right now. And I think there's a purpose to it. I think we have, I think we have millions of kids that we need to save. And, um, and he's opening the door for me to do it. And what could be more fun than to be engaged in a cause that is going to save lives? For sure. It is a blast. It is yeah. a blast. And the ideas just keep coming. And, and fortunately, I have Diane as an assistant who um, clones me. How do I say it? What do you do? It's like she's a farm girl. She works, she works as hard as I do, if not harder. And it's like, it's pretty great. That's great. Well, Richard, it's been a pleasure to talk to you again. Um, anything else you want to say, Richard, about the book, about what's coming next year? Anything else going on in your life? Oh, I think that's enough. I shared. <laughs> yeah, no, great thing. I mean, just uh, I found the opportunity in hard times, opportunity can grow. And so we have actually expanded our reach during all this. And it's people need hope. And my books are about hope. And you Noel know, Letters has that. I'll just spoiler alert. I'll say, hey, you will be happy you read it. You'll be happy after you read it. Okay. We'll have to check it out. It's on Amazon, anywhere you get books, right? Yeah, it's a New York Times, USA Today, Wall Street Journal bestseller already. All right. Well, Richard, thank All you right. for your time. Oh, thank you. Good talking to you.